Hi, I'm Greg from RV Haulers. I'm standing in front of one of our Generation 2 Volvo heavy duty trucks. We've converted this one to a single rear axle. But what I wanted to show you today was a headlight solution. Uh, to give you a bit of background, the Generation 2 Volvos are most recognized because they have not only a lens system in the fender, but down in the bumper there's a set of high beam and low beam lights as well. Now these Generation 2 trucks have what I consider to be a flaw from the factory. The low beam light, this one in the top of this lens, is frankly, it's dismal. It, it provides very, very poor illumination at night. Even polishing the lenses, putting in new bulbs, making sure everything is clean and clear, just doesn't give you enough light, I find, at night. What I want to show you is an invention of uh, one of our heavy duty truck uh, fellows uh, by the name of Mr. Dixon. Um, what he has invented is a drop-in replacement for the low beam in this upper lens position. It also provides high beam illumination. It's very easy to install. It greatly improves the nighttime illumination. And I want to take you through the, uh, show you the parts and take you through the installation of that today. The retrofit or the installation of the new light assembly is best done with the light outside of the truck. It's just so much easier to work on a bench. So the first thing we want to do is gain access underneath the hood. Now we're going to be taking out just one of these headlights to begin with. What I want to do for you is I want to show you the before and after. I'm going to leave one of the old lenses or light assemblies in the truck. I'm going to put in one of the new Dixon solutions. And we're going to be able to compare. I'm going to cover one at a time after we're done with this installation and show you how well it works. So the headlight assembly is right in, in this corner of the fender. And the way you remove it is with a 10 millimeter wrench. Now you can use a socket or you can use one of these as well. Uh, but grab your 10 millimeter. Remember, on these Volvos, everything is metric. Inside the hood, you'll see that there is a wire. Uh, the power supply that goes to the headlights is right here. And in most cases, you'll need a set of side cutters to take off this tie wrap so that it loosens this wire. And you'll want to disconnect uh, this wiring harness at this gray point. To get this black and gray connector apart, you need to slide this gray um, small portion out of the harness and you have to squeeze a little lever here holding on to the two ends it comes apart so that is the little lever that you need to squeeze and this is how that gray connector went in there And of course that gray connector keeps the, um, that little lever from being depressed. Now that we've disconnected our connector, now it's time to get these five bolts out of the uh, housing, the, the lens housing. What I want to point out is that uh, be careful that you don't, that you hold your hand in behind this housing when you're taking the last bolt out. What I'll usually do is I'll take the four on the outside, I'll take those out first leaving this one to be the last one so that I can hold the lens in behind, get my hand under here, and take this one out last. But I'll get those four out first. down to the last bolt, holding the lens well, back at my workbench we've got our driver's side lens removed from the truck and what we want to do first is 
gain access to the inside of the light housing. Uh, this is our low beam access and our high beam. These, uh, you want to put a towel down on your workbench so you don't scratch your lens. And we want to take these off. These are all quite often really stiff, especially if they're a little dirty or dusty. You may need to clean them or put a little bit of lubricant around there. You don't want to leave too much because you will attract more dust and dirt after. See it proved true. It was a little hard to get out. So we've gained access to our two lights now. We want to remove the wiring harnesses from both light bulbs. So there's the low beam and high beam. And to remove the H11 low beam bulb, you turn it just a, almost a quarter turn and it comes out. So with the high beam. Next we need to remove the reflector from the low beam position. Now I feel a little bit like a you one of those chefs on TV that has things magically appear in, in preparation but just to show you this is what is in here right now this is the reflector that I've already removed from another lens and the four screws that you want to take out are here here they're on the outside edges outside corners and you'll need a Phillips number two screwdriver for that number two is exactly the right size to fit in the screw that's inside there. That's what's inside. Uh, as well, I find it's a little handy sometimes to give your screwdriver a magnetization at this point, just so that the screw, if it lets loose, it doesn't fall down inside there. Now let me zoom in a little bit and I'll try to show you. There, there's one, there's another. And you kind of get the idea. You need to uh, get those four screws out of the outside positions. Now that the reflector is loose, I want to show you how to get this out. It's actually, if you try to just kind of bend it and get it out this way, it doesn't seem to want to go. The best way to do it is to turn it counterclockwise and get these little flanges to come out one at a time. So there's one, there's two, and then it rotates out. So there is our lens. You see, actually, it's a little, little dusty there. But that is what we're going to be replacing. Well, let's unpack our new projector. So the first thing you'll notice about the new projector is that it has a shutter mechanism inside of it compared to the old one. This one was just a fixed projector, nothing moved inside. What this one is going to do is that shutter is going to move up and down and provide both a high beam and a low beam with the one xenon bulb. So here's the container of bulbs. You want to be careful that you don't touch the bulbs themselves. So they come in a little protective plastic case. Take off this foam piece and take this clip completely off. We'll need that in a moment. And be careful, again, not to touch the bulb. Slide it in, and we're going to replace this clip.
So put the open ends through the holes and then the spring clip slides in under there. So we have two sets of wires coming out of this projector. We've got the shutter control as well as the power supply to the bulb itself. Now we're going to put the new projector housing into the lens assembly. The way we do this is we start with the widest point of the new projector and holding it at quite an, an angle you want to start by getting that long piece just through this little notch and we're going to like we did with the other one turn it uh, counterclockwise and it falls into place. Now what we'll do is I'm going to put this back in and replace the four screws with my, my Phillips screwdriver, but don't tighten them yet, just keep them a little bit loose. Now it's time to install the adapter harness and the ballast. So I'm going to unpackage the ballast and everything is very well labeled. <clears throat> the way this is going to be oriented is the connector that says LED is going to be ultimately ran down to the uh, high beam position. But of course we want to feed this through to do that. The way that I like to connect these is first there was a wire that went to the high beam bolt. Just for now, I'm going to route it up to here and connect it to the proper position on the wiring harness. Now I'm going to feed that and the LED connector back through. Next, we can connect the shutter. So there's my black and red wires running from the uh, shutter inside. I'll connect it to the shutter on the harness. And here is the wire that used to run to the low beam. That is going to connect into the right spot. Harness. And you want to make sure that you've got the uh, wires oriented properly. Um, <coughs> White is ground in this case. Blue is going to run to red. And lastly, the end of this harness is where the ballast connects. And of course, there's only one way that it'll go. You can't hook it up the wrong way. And then these connectors are going to go to the bulb itself. Uh, be really careful putting these together that you don't bend the, bend the pin that's inside there, so put it together really straight. You should feel it slide in there. There we go. Now, <clears throat> we need to push the rest of this wiring harness in, and the ballast is going to go in here as well. Now there's a really good place to put this ballast. I'm not going to take the, uh, the protective backing off that uh, sticker yet, or the tape yet. It will fit, there's a flat spot right in there. So just kind of pre-fit it to make sure that it's going to go in nicely. So I'll take, this is really good quality 3M automotive tape. Um, it's pretty clean in there. If it isn't, make sure you give it a wipe first. And once you place it, it's not going to move. So, next we're going to put in the um, LED replacement that's going to go into the high beam position. And of course, that's the only connector we have left is for the LED. Now that we have our LED installed, in the high beam position, we need to replace our covers. Turn them 
clockwise. Again, nice and stiff. Until they get to the end. And that's it. Let's replace our headlight in the truck. I have my test subject in front of us here. We've, as you can probably tell already, we've got our Xenon, our Dixon solution on the right hand side, and we've got our factory Volvo headlight on the passenger side. Both of these lights have been aimed identically. Let me turn around and show you. Okay, I have my back to the truck right now, and you can see the light on the left hand side. What I want to point out is the demarcation. Uh, you can see that there is a really obvious line so that we know that these lights are not going to be reflecting in people's eyes. Uh, they're aimed identically to uh, the factory one on the right. I think you can already see that we've got quite a difference in illumination. But let's get this truck out on the road and see what difference it makes. What I have is I have a piece of cardboard I'm going to put over each of the lenses one at a time. I'll be able to flip them back and we'll be able to compare. So let's cover the Dixon headlight and we'll cover the factory Volvo. So, you see nothing. We're on low beams only. There's no fog lights on. There's the factory Volvo. There's the Dixon. Now what I've done is turned on my high beams. So here is the Volvo high beam. And the Dixon high beam. There's the factory Volvo. There's the Dixon. High beam. The Dixon high beam.